Our third speaker is a conservative MPA. Last month, we had Dr. Robert McCann speak to our group. He's a Republican running for Commissioner District 5. Right? So Dr. Robert McCann, as of right now, will be facing Ray Turner, who is the government-appointed incumbent in District 5 Board of County Commissioners. Uh, that's where we're at. So in August primary, it'll be them two. The winner of those two, assuming that Ray, uh, and Dr. McCann, we know for sure, will face in November uh, Joe DiBartolomeo. I, I had to work very hard to, to get that straight. That's harder than Brevard versus Brevard. <laughs> but I, I, I've looked at it. He's been interviewed by the press. He's got. He's put out things like that. I've been at different forums where he's been. He goes to a lot of, I think one person I didn't mention, he's a member and he's an elected official, but our at-large District 7 County Commissioner, George Cruz, is here with us tonight. And many of the times I've run in and I've actually gotten to know Joe on the sideline was because he was in attendance at some of the town halls that George Cruz routinely does. If only they all would. And he was there. Uh, without further ado, Joe D, Joe DiBartolomeo, uh, the, the, the jury. I, we cannot endorse MPAs. We cannot. However, he is not the he is not the first time that we've allowed an MPA, and next month we'll have another MPA. We'll talk. We feel uh, we make certain exceptions just because we feel part of our responsibility is to help to educate and inform the voters. We do that. We're not going to have Democrats come to our meetings and make their pitch for office. But there are some selective MPAs that will do that, even though. Well, we're not going to ask you to pass all the Bailey Wicks because we can't consider you for endorsement uh, in accordance with our bylaws, and righteously so, but nevertheless, I, I think folks need to hear. Here you go, Joe. Not up and not so ready. My name is Joe D. That's it. You charged me for two. Oh, sorry about God, family, I get country. I'll take it off. Thank you. That's all you gotta know. Yes. That's what's in my heart. That's what's taught to me since I've been a little kid. So I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes. How, how much time do I have? Can you take about ten minutes and then you got about at least a lot, at least five minutes. Really fast. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm from New Jersey. Uh, born and raised in New Jersey, Bergen County, and we talked at the last meeting about from the same area. Hudson County, that's right. Um, went to public grammar school went to Catholic high school, went to Rutgers University, have a degree in accounting and uh, marketing management, uh, went to FBU, have my first master's in finance, my second master's in IT. I um, started in public, uh, worked a little bit for one of the um, big six for a little while. I worked for a company called Curtis Wright. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them. Yes. Fortune 50. But, but actually, I was an internal audit for all of their manufacturing sites across the country. My home office was in a building that you went underground and the top had trees and houses because it was a strategic air target. And, um, and that was uh, in early 2000s, and I, and I didn't think that was an issue anymore. Um, from there, I did a couple of years in banking. Um, I worked for Rolls-Royce Motor Cars, uh, North America, uh, for a couple of years. I worked for a software company. So uh, someone was talking about uh, Vertex. Vertex, yeah. So uh, I own uh, that company now, and we do ERP and BI, which integrates with uh, Vortex and other tech stuff. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm running as an NPA. Um, when I moved to Bradenton, and I'm in the same home for 18 years, I, uh, when I registered to vote, I was in the PA. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, Jersey is a very blue state. Um, my dad was in trucking, my mother was in office administration. I put myself through um, college and through my graduate studies. Um, what, what I want to say is that the reason why I maintain the NPA's uh, status right now is because the fringes of all parties are an interference to the business that needs to be done at hand. Now, I'm not a politician. I happen to be the chairman of the Terror Preserve CBD. That is an elected official, but it's nonpartisan. 
I'm on my second term being an elected official there. And through the years of living here, I've seen a, a degradation of, uh, of a couple different things, which, which are my primary focus right now. The first thing is our quality of life has diminished dramatically. And what does quality of life mean? To me, I used to say it's from the morning, the, the minute you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night, but it's also the overnight because if your neighbors are blasting the music or you got dog barking and stuff, it's a 24-hour scenario. But it took me an hour to get here. I live in Tara, um, where it used to take me a half an hour. Um, the traffic situation used to be a seasonal affair, and now it's 12 months. 75 is a parking lot. Uh, where I live, State Road 70, uh, one of the highest uh, traveled roads in the country. Or, I'm sorry, in the county. Um, the, the second thing is property rights. And this is very important because when I go to county commission meetings or I view them online, I always hear a few of the commissioners talking about property rights. But they're not talking about our property rights. They're talking about the developer's property rights. So our quiet enjoyment, the fact that we've purchased our property knowing what the rules and regulations are. They, they don't seem to apply to the developers. The last thing, which is very surprising to me, is the destruction of our environment. And Florida uh, has two main drivers of the economy, agriculture and tourism. And when you destroy your environment, you destroy that revenue stream. Um, we could talk about the buffer zone. We could talk about the uh, phosphate stack. There's a lot of things we can talk about. There's a lot of issues that need to be addressed in this county. I am a fiscal conservative. I'm all about family values. I'm a Christian. I go to church. I am a gun owner in both Florida and New Jersey. In Florida, it took me three days. In New Jersey, it took me a year. <laughs> in New Jersey, I can't carry in any capacity. But in Florida, I took a course, I passed a test, and I have a concealed carry permit. But I own the gun for home protection. So um, when I'm out and about, I see a few people who don't understand concealed because they think it's outside their shirt. But that's, that's a different subject. So um, I threw my hat in the ring here because I've got a good life. Um, I love where I live. I love this county. But it's my turn because right now it's going to take civic courage. And that seems to be lacking in our society, in our community. It took me three months, maybe four, to do the due diligence to figure out if I was going to run. I met with Sheriff Wells. I met with Chief uh, White House, the uh, fire department, right? I met with Pat Barber, Barber of the Teachers Union. I went out east. I talked to the Agricultural Union. I talked to everybody. What I wanted to find out is, does my education skills, experience, and most important values match what the represent representation of this county requires? Everybody said yes. The only thing they said to me is, you're going to have a hard time because you don't have an R after your name. And here's what I want to say to everybody. 80 to 90 percent of our issues in Manatee County aren't right or left. They're not blue or they're red. They're Manatee County issues. And I don't have to have an ideology where I dig my heels in that is outside of my lane. I want to run for this office. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. I want to be everybody's voice. And even if you don't vote for me and I get elected, you come to me and tell me what the issue is, if it makes fiscal sense, if it benefits our community, I'm a thousand percent for it. But I'm not going to take money from developers. I'm not taking money from PACs. This is a grassroots campaign I'm running. 
and I'm going to need support from Republicans, Democrats, and EPAs. So, with that said, if anybody has any questions, be kind to me. Just keep them to two in vanity. I, I'm not looking at, at federal or state politics because that's an animal I don't even want to try to understand right now because there's just so much confusion going on that uh, it blows my mind. Anyway, any, anything I can answer for anybody? Any questions? This could be pretty easy. Yes, sir. First of all, thank you very much for writing. Um, all the Republicans just in District 5 appreciate that because you've officially closed the primary so they don't have to go, go with everyone and it won't be an open primary. Um, once the party is actually determined who the Republican nominee is, I don't think there will be a Democrat, but if there is, we'll find out. But if the current situation is you end up running against a Republican and you're the alternative, how do you think you'll... I mean, we had some races where a third party candidate will get 25, 30% of the vote, which is very high. <clears throat> Most third party candidates don't get anywhere near that, but <clears throat> how do you think you'll be able to reach out to, and it depends on who the candidate is, as to who you can get your support from. If it's an incumbent, you may see a lot of public support you. If it's the alternative, they may stick with the party. But what do you see yourself doing as being able to in your case, hopefully expand the gap to get Democrats Republicans and non-party players to help you out. Okay. All right. So, um, first of all, I work for a living. I'm not retired. Okay. I still own a business. So, I have to tend to my customers, my vendors, and my employees. When I'm not doing that, I am meeting with HOAs, I'm meeting with CDDs. I am touching everybody I can. Um, yesterday I spent four hours knocking on doors getting petitions signed because if I don't get my 680 petitions, I've got to come up with thousands of dollars just to be on the ballot. So if anybody here lives in District 5, please sign my petition because this is an uphill battle. Now I can tell you that nobody has slammed the door in my face. I can tell you the majority of folks, they sign the petition and they say thank you for running. I do not want to talk derogatory against anybody who is seeking public service because it's admirable. But here's the thing. One of these candidates has made a public statement that we are under the obligation to build homes. Now, that is the root of where our problem is right now because this urban sprawl that we're experiencing is taxing our infrastructure, is diminishing our quality of life, is jeopardizing our environment. Now, am I against development? Not at all. I'm a businessman. I think a good economy has continued housing. I'm a big believer in workforce housing. Not low income housing, but every small business I go to has a help wanted sign because you can't Thank afford you. to buy a house and work for 15, 20, 25 dollars an hour. So, and I know George, this is a passion of his, we need to figure out a way to get more workforce housing in Manatee County so that we have the workforce for our small business because small business is the driver of the, of the economics in any community. So, anything else anybody wants to ask? Well, this is really easy. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, call us here. Thank you, Joe.